be like this. Hello, good morning. Welcome once again to our second lecture in psychometrics. It's good to have you guys again. Unfortunately, we've not been able to drop the next video for a very long time now. Our sincere apologies, you know, because of uh, so many other stuff that came up, we we're not able to drop the next video on time. So apologies to those of you that are coming in, that have watched the first video. But for those of you that are just coming in today, everything is fine, right? So we are good to go. So thank you once again for joining us. Today we'll be looking at the second topic in Genesis 106. Remember, this is Genesis 106. So for those of you that are waiting for Genesis 206, we are going to upload that very soon. And then um, for those who are coming in for Genesis 106 for the first time, actually, it's good for you to pay absolute attention so that we'll be together while we do this. Meanwhile, for those that are going into Genesis 206, please kindly note that your lecture is going to be uploaded. It may have been uploaded by now. So you will click and follow those ones that are for your course. So it's very important. Okay, so today we are going to look at basic concepts in psychometrics. Basic concepts in psychometrics. In our first lecture, we looked at the conceptualization of psychometrics. We defined psychometrics. We talked about what and what is psychometrics and how um, psychometrics can be used in some areas, though in a limited way. So in this lecture, we are going to look at basic concepts that are mostly used in psychometrics. Okay, so um as usual please you have to follow uh, some instructions please kindly subscribe to this channel it's very important to subscribe because if you subscribe and you put your notification bell on every single video that we post you will be notified so we will not need to be distributing or disseminating the information again as soon as we post a new video you will be notified so you can quickly just come up and attend the class so please it's important that you subscribe so that we will not have challenges of looking for you up and down when we have another lecture and then put, of course when you do the subscription put your notification bell on so that um, once a new video is uploaded it will be easy for you to just pick and follow that up. And then again, please share it among your, your fellow students or your colleagues so that um, we will be able to reach out to everybody that is needed in this course. And of course, you can click the thumbs up button if you love the video so that we can have wider viewership. Now, these are the basic concepts in psychometrics. In today's lecture, we are going to look at eight or nine basic concepts in psychometrics. And so we'll be looking at test, we'll be looking at testing, we'll be looking at measurement, we'll be looking at evaluation, we'll look at assessment, we'll look at validity, we'll look at reliability, we'll look at norm and standardization. And so for the sake of um, those that are doing it for exam, you are going to help us in trying to answer some questions yourself because we are going to have a wider coverage as time goes on. Now, in the basic objectives like we normally do, of course, they are already displayed for us. Please, you go through them. Possibly you write them down so that at the end of the class, you should be able to know what and what you were able to achieve in this course. And again, um, they are all there. I don't need to read them out. So you can pause the video and look at them again and pick them one by one 
so that they will guide you or they will serve as your guiding principle during your study especially on your own all right now these are what these are the things we are going to discuss i've already displayed them to you so we are going to start straight away we are not going to waste much time so the basic concept like i said there are about nine of them there are more but for the sake of this class we may be taking only nine and even in these nine i am thinking of leaving some of them for you to explain them on your own and probably explain them in the comment section okay the first one is test test of course the word test is not a new word to almost all of us it is not the reason is because majority of us already have an idea of what a test is apart from being um so telling somebody that I'm going to test you, or I was just testing you, just, it's just a test and all of that. We have so many knowledge, we have a lot of understanding about um, test. And so it may be um, a smooth ride for us um, for to, you know, understand that. But then in psychometrics, what does a test mean? Test can be an examination, an observation, or an evaluation of something, a situation, or someone. So we can test, we can, you can refer to test as an examination, we can refer to test as an evaluation, we can refer to test as a way of examining something or someone, and that is what a test is. Now, in another way, a test can be an instrument that can be used to get a result a test can be used as was well, can be termed as an instrument that can be used to get a result of course when i'm talking about this we know that there are so many of these tests there are so many of these tests we have things like wind anemometer we have things like thermometer we have things like um uh, a lot of them temperature um temperature gauge and so so on and so forth I know that during this COVID-19, there was this thing that looks like a gun. That whenever you want to enter a particular door, they point at you. And so we can call that a test. And now, in psychometrics, test is any means that is used to get response to which human behavior can be related. Any means that can be used to get response to which human behavior can be related. A test, again, can be referred to as an instrument that is used in measuring a sample of behavior. I'm telling you about this in so many ways so that you can try to understand it in different perspectives. And so in psychometrics, a test can be what? An instrument or a tool that can be used to get results or an instrument that can be used in measuring individual behavior. And so when you are talking of measuring individual behavior, you have a lot of ways. You have tests, which are, can be questionnaires, it can be uh, uh, interview, it can be any measure. But then you are using that as a test. And so in psychometrics, any, any instrument or a process or a scale that you use in measuring individual behavior in order to generate responses that are related to that particular behavior is what is called a test. And an example is utilization of achievement tests to evaluate individuals' achievement or academic or vocational skills. Of course, you are looking at that as an example. So there are so many of them. If you go to industrial psychology, there are so many of them that are used to test individual performance so that you can use it in predicting individual performance. Now, what am I trying to say in essence? What I'm trying to say in essence is that in psychometrics, a test is an instrument that is used in measuring individual uh, behavior in order to generate responses. And those responses have to be in relation to what you have tested. That means you cannot test personality and have 
responses on aggression. You cannot test interest and have responses on performance. So when you are testing performance, you should have responses on what? Performance. So that whatever you are doing is in relation to that particular um, that particular behavior which you are testing at that particular point in time. So that's what I'm trying to say. So in psychometric testing or test, sorry, we're not going to test him. I'm becoming too fast. We're not going to test. Him. So a test, like like I said, in psychometric is an instrument that can be used to get responses or to measure individual behavior. Do we understand? That's very simple. Now let's look at the next one. The next one is testing. Testing. These two, like I said, is what you have. An idea about I was only testing you we say these things over and over and over again it was just a test testing 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 you remember now for those of you that are DJs and and all of that and so it is um, a word that we are conversant with now go back a little bit you remember that I told you that in psychometrics a test is an instrument that is used in measuring individual behavior. Do you remember that? Now, testing becomes what? A process. Is that correct? Yes. Testing becomes what? A process. So this in any way, this then implies that testing is a process of using a test to measure individual what? Behavior. It's as simple as that, right? It's as simple as that. But you can see the definition, so long definition here that I've displayed. But then when it comes to the, 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 the aspect of it that requires one's definition, it does not mean you must go in so many ways for you to be able to explain. Test is an instrument used in measuring individual behavior. So testing now becomes what? A process. Now, looking at what we have, we can say that testing is a systematic use of test, Abby, to attach values to behaviors. A systematic use of our test to attach values to behaviors. And then these behaviors could be what? Your ability, it could be your personality, it could be your academic achievement, it could be your cognitive, it could be your emotional function, it could be anything at all. But the systematic use of test, remember I told you, that it is a process of. So it becomes in the same thing as something I'm trying to say in another way. Systematic use of that test in measuring individual behavior and attaching values to these behaviors is what is called testing. Remember, in our first lecture, which is on conceptualization of psychometrics, I made mention of psycho and metrics. And I told you that Metrics has to do with measurement. And so we have come back to reflect that measurement we were talking about in our first lecture now. And we are trying to say that measuring individual behavior has to be done with a test, which is an instrument. The process or the systematic use of that instrument to measure individual behavior is what is called what? testing. Is that understood? Very, very clear. So I know that you will be reading all these ones for you to get more understanding, but this is just a simple way of, of explaining what I just talked about. Now, in trying to measure, in the process of measurement, of course, we are going to attach values to some behaviors. We are going to attach value to some behaviors. I remember in the first lecture, I still so made mention of that. And I say that you attach, you, you, in the process of measurement, you are going to attach values to certain behaviors such that it will be easy for you to interpret at the end of everything. Because remember, we are quantifying. We are using numbers to explain behavior. So it is a form of quantification. And any form of quantification has to do with using numbers to represent certain behavior such that at the end of it all, it will be easy for you to use those numbers again to be able to explain that behavior 
which those numbers were representing. Do you understand? And so it becomes um, easy on um, some of that. So I, I have a small portion here that I need to capture before I will go to the network. So this, it, it talks about the fact that to differentiate two persons on how they lie on a psychological construct or a psychological test, testing is conducted, resulting in the apportioning of the scores to the two persons based on the amount of control they possess. It's the same thing I was trying to explain in the in, in the previous um, uh, previous discussion. So I was trying to say that the systematic way, the process of doing something, the process of measuring individual behavior using a psychological test or a test or an instrument or a scale or a questionnaire. I am calling these names because a time may come when I will be using them pari passu. I may be calling it questionnaire, I may be calling it test, I may be calling it scale, but always know that I'm trying to refer to one thing. And so it is important we do that. We have come to measurement, which is the third basic concept in psychometrics. I remember that I've talked a lot about measurement before. I've spoken so much about measurement before. But in this case, I'm going to talk about it more deeper, in a more scientific way, and then in, a, in an in-depth manner. Now, what is measurement? Measurement is simply an act or process of measuring. We are going to discuss that better. It may be tautological, isn't it? Because Michael West, what is measurement? Measurement is measurement. <laughs> I'm just joking anyways. Now, so I'm trying to say that measurement simply refers to as the process or an act of what? Measuring. Now, measurement refers to assigning values to what a test and a testing process presents assigning values to what a test or a testing process presents. That is the, what is called measurement. Of course, like I was telling you in the last video, I talked about a friend of mine, very close, uh, very, very close friend of mine, that is a tailor, and she, 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 when you come to her to do anything, to take any, so your clothes, she will first of all measure. She will measure from here to here. She will measure from here. And she's measuring and writing, measuring and writing. Exactly what is done in psychometrics too. Numbers are assigned to behaviors. So that when you go back and sit down, you begin to look at these numbers. Of course, you know that this number was for this behavior. This one was for this behavior. Or this one was for this particular response. This one was for this particular response. So it will be easier for you to get those numbers and represent those responses for you to be able to quickly and easily interpret some of uh, these things. So it's always very easy to assign numbers to values or uh, values or numbers to behaviors so that in trying to quantify, it will be easy. For you now, an instance is given here where a student had been taught on how to build a house, and in the course of building his or her level of achievement from the training could only be determined through measurement. Now, this measurement could be executed by conducting a terminal exam that may be graded over 100. Did you see what I'm trying to say? So you are, you, are, you are trying to measure an individual's achievement. You are teaching somebody how to build. A, you are teaching somebody a course on building or you are teaching somebody a course on mechanical engineering. And at the end of it, you are going to assess how the person performs in that course. Now, we are still coming back to what I was talking about, assigning numbers to behaviors. If you remember, performance in school is graded do you get that performance in school is graded so how will you know that somebody is intelligent is by that grade isn't it so that number those numbers or those grades or those numbers that translates to grades are now being represented as behavior somebody scores 70 
or 80 over 100. All right? The person gets an A. And the person becomes what? Intelligent. The person gets 80 marks. The person gets an A. The person is being referred to as someone who is intelligent or someone who has scored very well, who has passed. Now, what does that tell you? What, what that tells you is that what that tells you is that numbers are now used to represent performance. And in what way? Numbers are converted to grades, and those grades now represent one's performance. So that's what I'm trying to say in essence. So um, the, at the level of measurement is dependent on how you want to put it or you want to arrange it in whatever way you can. But then measurement could be excluded or could be conducted on terminal exam. It could be conducted on anything you want to do at all, provided you are doing quantification. So that is um, measurement. Now we look at evaluation. Evaluation is the next um, term that we are going to discuss. Now, evaluation is like measurement, but then it encompasses a larger scope. Evaluation is like what? Measurement, but it encompasses a larger scope. In the definition, evaluation is like a comprehensive and a continuous process which covers every aspect of individual achievement in an educative program. Though this is not just educative program, let's pass it. If I'm not saying that we are, if we are going to buy educative program, it might look like we are now tilting it towards education alone. But no, it might not necessarily be the educative program alone. It is what is encompassing. Now, in an educative program, I want to give you an example. Somebody goes to school and a person comes out with a certificate. And now, of course, they will tell us that certificate is not just a major of educational qualification, it's both character and whatever, and whatever, all right? Good. Now, when in the process of doing that, in the process of doing that course to get that certificate, the person must have gone through a series of things. For instance, the person goes into a lecture, and during that lecture, the lecturer is taking attendance, the lecturer is making sure that everybody comes to class on time, the lecturer is giving class work, the lecturer is giving assignments, the lecturer is giving tests, and the lecturer gives a side, um, examination. So at the end of all these things, everything is put together before it can now come out as a single object or a single thing that can be used to take scores or record of that person. In this case now, it is not just assigning numbers to a behavior alone. It is a process, a continuous process that covers every aspect of what you are doing in that place. For instance, you go to a mechanic shop to learn how to repair a carburetor. The person that is teaching you will not just take the carburetor immediately and begin to lose it and ask you to do this or do that. The person will first of all ensure that you, the person evaluates you Number one, you have to be in the shop every day. You have to be at work on time. You have to ensure that everything is that everything is done according to how it is expected to be done. And so evaluation in this case covers every aspect of your individual achievement. The processes that are involved Everything is covered whenever an evaluation is being done. And so 
it encompasses. It encompasses. So evaluation is mostly used in the field of education, like I said. It's mostly used in the field of education. I was trying to exclude it, but then I will still bring it back to that level because I wanted other people that are not just in education to also have a few of what we are trying to solve. So in colleges of education, for instance, they have what is called measurement and evaluation. And so it's even very easy for those in colleges to understand what I am trying to say. So evaluation is mostly used in um, education and integrated within the entire educational um, program. But not just exam, not just uh, test, not just assignment, but it encompasses everything. So like I was saying, like I'm talking to you now, before you graduate from that your course, especially if you are a student, before you graduate, maybe you are in NC1, NC2, NC3, or you are in HND1, HND2, or ND1 and ND2, before you graduate, you must be coming to school at least almost two or three times in a week, especially when school is in session, because you must have lectures almost three or four times in a week, and you have to attend those lectures. Some lecturers will give you time, because they will say, once it is 10, 20, nobody should come into the class again. And then you have to be, attendance it has, has to be there, so you have to be coming to class early. You will have assignments, you will have class works, you will have tests, and then you will finally write exam. So at the end of it all, your measurement, your major, remember we are talking about evaluation. So evaluation, like I told you, is like a wider scope of measurement. So the person is not going to just measure you on your exams alone, you get. You will be measured on your attendance, your tests, your assignments, your exams, your classwork. Everything will now be put together to be able to adequately quantify you or measure you or put you in a particular position of performance as to where you are expected or supposed to be. So that is um, evaluation. Now, before I go to the next one, please always know that you can always ask your questions in the comment section. If there is anything you don't understand, quickly ask the question in the comment section. Or you can reach out to your desk officer uh, through you can reach out to me directly through your desk officer so that the questions can reach us and then we'll be able to attend to them adequately now the next term is assessment 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 has to do with methods that are used to gather information about someone's knowledge ability understanding personality attitude motivation and so on and so forth so what I'm trying to say is that assessment has to do with methods that are used in gathering information about someone's behavior, all right? So the behavior could be anything. Methods, not just one, series of methods. Now, in assessment, you are going to do a lot of things. You are not just going to concentrate on one. You are going to utilize different modalities, so many of them, for you to be able to arrange or arrive at a particular situation so for instance if you before you can say that someone is intelligent you have a lot of things you will say because it may, it may not just be writing some people once they know that somebody writes very well they will say that oh this one is very intelligent no assessment will tell us that we should go beyond just writing some people can speak very well before you know now. In fact, some of you are already criticizing me that I don't even know how to speak. I understand anyway. That's just a joke. But then some people can speak very well, fluently, ex ex excessively fluent. They are excessively fluent. They can speak, they can Queen's English, you know, and all of that. But then, is that a measure of intelligence? No, it's not. So before you arrive at this is this, assessment is telling us that you should utilize different methods. Different methods. Not just one. I wrote very well. Uh -huh. I speak very well. Uh -huh. Do I reason very well? Do I perform uh, mental tasks very well? Do I do this very well? And all of that. So 
Assessment is telling us that we should utilize different methods in gathering information about an individual before we arrive at something. Now, this implies a utilization of different form of tests to assess the generality of an individual's ability or performance. Exactly what I was trying to say. You don't just look at one and say, oh, this, if that is the case, once you go to, um, what do we call, you go for an interview and then you sit with them and then you just blow grammar. They will say, oh, this one is best. They take you, no. But they utilize different methods. They first of all call for recruitment. People will come. They will write tests. Some of them will go through the first interview. They'll go through written interview. They'll go through oral interview. And all these things will now be put to place before they can arrive at what um, before they can arrive at a particular thing that they can say this is this or this is that. And so assessment require that you gather different methods um, to arrive at that. Now, in psychology, psychologically, psychological assessment is similar to psychological testing. But it usually involves a more comprehensive assessment of individuals. A more comprehensive assessment of individuals. This means that you have to be, you have to, you know, just you don't just have to be in one position to be able to arrive at a particular thing. Just like I said, you need to go extra miles to be able to arrive at them. So the process of assessment involves the integration of information from multiple sources, from multiple sources, such as test, such as um, an interview, such as history taking, such as asking people from other, asking questions from other people, and so on and so forth. Now, most times assessment is used in uh, therapy, therapeutic sessions. Because there are times when somebody comes to you with a problem and the person may not be willing to talk. You will ask this question, the person will tell you, no, I don't want to say anything. You ask the next one, the person will tell you, I don't want to say anything. The person will just be mute. And so assessment will help you to be able to get information from that person. Because apart from just asking questions, you issue questionnaire, you ask questions from the third party, you take history and so on and so forth. So that is for assessment. Now we'll look at the next term. Like I said, if you have any question, kindly drop it in the comment section. We have the next third, uh, um, basic concept, which is the validity. Validity simply means the extent to which a measurement instrument measures what it was designed to major. Validity simply means what? The extent to which an instrument measures what it was designed to major. A phone was designed to make calls, send messages, browse, and all of that. It becomes valid only when it is able to do that. A pen is designed to write. It becomes valid when it is able to write. And so, in psychometrics, once a test is measuring what it was designed to measure, it becomes valid. But the moment it is no longer, or the moment it is not measuring what it was designed to measure, we can say that that test is not worth valid. So validity simply means the extent to which an instrument measures what it was designed to measure. Personality instruments are designed to measure personality, all right? So to what extent are they measuring personality? Assessment, um, interest inventories are designed to measure interest. And so to what extent are they measuring that interest? So that is what I'm trying to say. So ability of a test to measure what it was designed to measure is what is called validity. Now, validity has um, four different types. There are four different types of validity. I'm not going to explain them. They are in the textbook. So quickly, if you are, please, you need to purchase the textbook for you to get uh, more on these things that we are talking about. So 
there are four types of validity. There is content validity, there is face validity, there is construct validity, and then there is what is called criterion related validity. Now, content validity has types. I think there is discriminant, there is um, divergent, there is convergent. Um, that, a few others, I cannot remember the I don't remember the where they are falling, but I think there are something like that. So get the textbook and then be reading, read more about this so that you grab more information about types of validity. The next concept is reliability. We have been talking about this. This one, we talk about it mostly in our day-to-day -day conversations. And of course, I know that we have um, a lot of conversations are used when the word reliability is mentioned or a lot of rather a lot of conversations are made where where the word reliability is mentioned or validity so people will say this one is valid this one is not valid some people call it legit it's not legit and all of that and so it is something that we are sometimes conversant with just that we are only applying it into psychometrics as it is now and so reliability is another term that we are going to talk about now, reliability has to do with consistency. You can rely on somebody when, when the person is what consistent. You can simply, people will simply say that, ah, that person is not consistent, he's not reliable, that guy is reliable, that guy is not reliable, that guy is reliable, that guy is not reliable. All these things are the things we talk about in most of our conversations. So it has to do with consistency. The consistency at which a test gives similar result when it is used over time is what is called reliability. What did I say? The consistency at which a test gives result, similar result, when it is used over time is what is called reliability. That is the degree to which a result of a measurement instrument can be depended on to be accurate. The degree to which the, the, the result can be depended on to be accurate. The accuracy of your result, the degree to which you can say that, oh, this result is accurate, is what is called reliability. Now, for instance, you have a test that is administered to a student here now, and then you administer that to a student in this hall, 10 a.m., when there is light, there is AC, everybody is chill, they take the test. You come back again and then administer the same test to them under the same condition, in the same place and everything, and the result is the same. You can say that result is what? Reliable. But a situation where you have done that, the first one, and then when you have done the second one, it is different from the, the first one. You are doing the third one, it's different from the first one, it's different from the second one. Then that result is no longer reliable. And so reliability has to do with consistency in the accuracy of a result, given that it has been done over and over again, and the result is similar to the one that you have had previously. I don't know whether you understand that. So, reliability ranges from 0 0.00 to 1.00. Reliability ranges from what? 0 0.00 to 1.00. Now, what I'm trying to say is that in by the time we go into practical aspect of psychometrics, you will see that we are going to administer some tests, we are going to run some analysis. And so when we run the analysis, we are going to put it on a scale. So you need you see you see that it will range from it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and like that to the the highest one, which is one. It doesn't exceed one. Once it is more than one, it means that result is erroneous. There is error in the result and when it is 0 0.00 that means there is no reliability at all at all so he get 2005 says that 
there is no reliability in a test when the score is 0 0.00. That's what I was just trying to explain just now. Now, in reliability too, there are four different ways you can establish it. Otherwise, you can say that there are four types of reliability. The first one is test retest reliability. The test retest reliability has to do with you test it and then you test it again, all right? And then compare the two results. Are they similar? Are they accurate? It will show you reliability. Now you have inter rater inter rater reliability. inter rater reliability. The rater has to do with having two different professionals rate it. So you have the rating of this one, you have the rating of the second one. And so if the ratings of the two are the same, the result is reliable. Then the third one is split half. Split half has to do with dividing it into two. You have the first part, you have the second part. So are they the same? Are they similar? It becomes a reliability. Then you have alternate or parallel form reliability. Now having one and getting another alternative one that is the same thing with that one that you are working with. For instance, you have a test. You have a personality test, a uh, big five personality. Then you look for another personality test that is similar to big five and you administer the two of them per pursuit. Then you compare them to see whether it is reliable or not. More of this is in the test book. So they said the um, next one is norm. Norm. Now, in every examination, in every examination, it is always easy for us to know those that fail and those that pass, isn't it? It's always easy for us to know those that fail and those that pass. The reason is because we have set a particular standard to which we can adjourn, to which we can say, that this person that score above or this standard can be classified as pass or this. And then the person that score below this standard can be classified as this or that. That standard in psychometrics is what is called what? A norm. A norm. So the norm is that particular score that make it possible to determine the relative standing of an individual when he is taking a test. What did I say? That score that determines the relative standing of an individual when he takes a test is what is called a norm. Relative standing in this case means that when the individual took this test, where? did he stand? What is his or her score? And what can that score be translated to? Now, before we can know that that score is being translated to something, we must have arrived at a particular level that we can say that when the person gets to this level, this is what we can say the person score. For instance, we can set our norm and say that once somebody scores 50 and above, the person has passed. Once the person scores below 50, the person has failed. So that 50 becomes a score that we can use as our norm, or some people call it a normative score. So the score that determines an individual's relative standing on a particular scale is what is called norm. We can see these things in several um, psychological tests. At the time will come when we'll be talking about uh, test manual and all of that. And so it will be easy for us to understand some of those things much, much more better. But even in this case, it will be easy, getting easier because as we go, you see one linking to another, taking you to another level, and it continues that way. So we can use that to judge. We can use the norm to judge everybody that is taking a scale. We can say that, okay, for instance, if you go to, there's a personality test called Big Five Personality Test. 
And in this big five personality test, there are different aspects that make it big five. Five as in one, two, three, four, five. So there are different aspects that make it the big five. So these aspects have um, items that constitutes each of the big five. So that can also be used as an example. Another example can be that we have internal and external locus of control. Locus of control is a term in psychology. You can read up on it. Locus of control. Locus is spelled L-O-C-U-S. Then locus of control. So there is what is called internal and external locus of control. Now, how do we know that somebody has an internal or an external locus of control? It's by what? The norm. The norm would tell us that when somebody scores, so, 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 score, the person has internal locus of control. When somebody gets to so, 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 score, the person has what? External locus of control. So this is what is called um, the norm. And we will go deeper into it when time goes on. Last but not the least on this is standardization. 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 Standardization is something that we already have little knowledge on. We, are, we talk about standard. I have my standards. You have your standards. We talk about them all the time. Mm -hmm. He's not my standard. She's not my standard. We talk about that. This is not my standard. That is not my standard. Now, in psychometrics, too, there is what is called standardization. And what is standardization? Standardization is the process that helps you to bring out a form or a frame of objectivity. Objectivity in administration, in scoring, and in interpreting a test. What did I say? A process of establishing a frame for objectivity, for objectivity in administration, in scoring, and in interpretation of tests. Before I explain that, I want to give you a little example. I want to give you a little scenario or maybe a little explanation. Now, in psychology or psychometrics, we don't rely on opinion. Or we don't rely on wisdom. I am not saying they are not good, though. I am not saying they are bad, though. Wisdom is very, very... If we the Bible, we even say wisdom is profitable and all of that, right? Uh -huh. Now, in psychometrics, we don't just rely on that. We deal with objectivity. And objectivity has to do with going there with an unbiased mind. By the time you take your biased mind to a particular something, you are already anticipating the outcome of it. But in psychometrics, we don't anticipate the outcome of anything. We take objectivity as our watchword. And in the process of that objectivity, whatever comes out is what we are going to accept. What am I trying to say in essence? I am going into the field to check if um, social support can help women who have what is called postnatal depression. Postnatal depression is that type of depression that you have when you have given birth recently. So it's a kind of form of depression. Now, we'll be looking at what if people have social support, people have support from their family, from their friends and people, would they have that depression? Normally, if I am going there without an objective mind, it's always easy for me to conclude that, yes, uh, uh, people have support now. They have friends that are supporting them. There are family members that are supporting them. There are people out there that are supporting them. So why would they have depression? But I may be wrong. I may be wrong in the sense that at the end of that research, that research I may discover that even with this support, people will still have depression. Do you understand that? So it's always easy and more free or more scientific to go into these things with an objective mind. 
So the objectivity or the framework in the objectivity of your administration, your scoring, and your interpretation of a test is what is called standardization. You have a psychological test or a scale or an instrument. Remember, I mentioned this thing before. So I'm sure I told you that I will be calling them, I will be using them interchangeably. So you have um, your, you have your test. Now, what, how is that test going to be administered? How are you going to be administered, administering it to people? Is it by computer? Is it by paper? Is it by what? How are you going to score it? If they answer with a tick one, what does that mean? If they tick this, what does that mean? And after that, how are you going to interpret those scores? All these things have to be objectively stated. And when that is done, standardization now does what takes place. So for a test to be considered to be standardized, or for an instrument to be considered to be standardized, that instrument or test must have been administered under a uniform condition. The scoring must be objective, and the test must be designed to measure relative performance, not absolute performance. I am picking this one by one so that by the time we start making use of it, it will not be difficult for you. Now, I will be picking it one by one and be explaining. Now, for the test to be standardized, like I said, the test must be administered under a uniform condition. What does this mean? It means that if you are administering the test, if the test is going to be administered in a noisy environment, that means everywhere you are administering it must be noisy. If the test is going to be administered in a classroom that is quiet, it means any time you want to administer that test, it makes sure that it is in a classroom and the classroom is quiet. I don't know whether you understand now. So the, the administration process has to be uniform. All right? And then when you finish with the administration, score, okay? how you score it to has to be in uniform and objective. You don't have to be biased. If somebody gets 10, give him 10. If somebody gets 20, give him or her 20. And of course, I know this happens in a lot of uh, schools and all of that. People get scores, sometimes bias scores, sometimes with a lot of sentiments and all of that. I'm not in any way saying, um, uh, I'm not saying something that doesn't exist. Of course, I know that it exists. All right, it does. Uh -huh. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> just that's just by the way anyway so but but it happened right it happened so biasness uh, okay that is if there's a word like that to something is even making me to speak a lot of things no so it occurs it occurs in so many things people get scores based on the, the subjective nature of what their lecturers or their people the, the person mark and feels and not necessarily because of what they have written down. So in psychometrics, we stand so much, we, we stand so much against that. It has to be objective. If you get zero, then take your zero. If you have 50, take your 50. It has to be objective. And the test must be designed to measure relative performance, not absolute performance. Relative performance in the sense that the performance has to be can be changed. The performance can be changed. I remember there was this particular case in a school where I went that one um, one guy or one girl was getting a particular score each time he writes that course, each time. For consecutively three years, it was the same score, 25. The next year, 25. The next year, 25. Ah, uh ah. -uh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So, it has to be relative, relative, in the sense that there is possibility that it can increase, there is possibility that it can reduce. So, what I'm trying to say, in essence, is that today somebody is getting 40 in a score and you are laughing. The person may get 60 tomorrow. It has to be relative. It can be improved. It can be reduced, and so on and so forth. So, standardization ensures all these things are put in place before a test can be called what standardized.
So now I'm going to do a, a little recap of what we have done. I've told you before that we were going to talk about basic concepts in psychometrics. And we have talked about all of them, beginning from test to testing, measurement, um, evaluation, um, of the, uh, validity, reliability, norm, and standardization. And we have been able to explain to some extent what all these things means and where they can be used. I may not be able to explain everything in details, but like I said, there is a textbook for you to purchase online. It is very important that you purchase that textbook because this is a new course. And so you cannot get, you cannot do the course well. I'm not saying you cannot anyway, but it's, it's advisable you get it because it will help you to read more on your own because this is 100% online. So you may not have the opportunity to ask too many questions or um, interact with the lecturer most of the time. So it will be it will be good to get a textbook. The title of the textbook is Introduction to Psychometrics. This is online on your portal. It's very, very cheap. So you can just click and purchase it. If you are in a school, your desk officer will give you a hard copy if you purchase a copy. But if you are not in a school, once we are able to do that, let us know so that we can send you a copy directly. And then, in the meantime, if you are able to purchase that, you can um, download the soft copy and be using it pending when you have your soft copy. So quickly go back and attend to those questions that I asked you to write down on your own so that you can uh, update yourself with um, the knowledge. So you can watch the video over and over to be able to understand more of what we are talking about. Thank you, and God bless all of us. See you in our next class.